Shakota. It's where 69 meets 40. It's quiet, peaceful, and where one traveling man has settled down. Sort of. I don't get that toy. Jerry Mayo's lived here a few times. Tulsa and then down to Shakota, back to Tulsa, down to Shakota, back to Tulsa. Now back down here again for a while. His journey started as a child at a group home in Turley. He graduated in 1965, a hippie at heart. I went off to a Christian college, and they, uh, at the end of the first semester, or close to it, they, they gave me a choice, either drop out of college, get kicked out of college, or quit protesting. Please stop! He didn't quit protesting and traveled all over before getting married and then divorced. Then in 1995, something strange happened. I got a deal in the mail from the bank that uh, I was overdrawn. Well, I called the bank up and there wasn't no deposit made, you know, from a Social Security check or anything. So he went to the Social Security office to check it out. It took like all day long to go to Social Security and back home. And, uh, Come find out I was dead. At least that's how the Social Security office listed him. When my uh, first wife died, she, uh, the daughter, you know, turned her into Social Security, is, you know, dead. And some way or another, I was the one that got X'd off. Turns out it was a data entry error, and it happens more often than you might think. Our partners at Scripps Howard News Service found 32,000 Americans listed by the Social Security Administration as dead over a 10 year period, when in fact, they were very much alive. They were erroneously listed under the administration's death master file. Making it worse? When someone is listed as dead, their social security number becomes public, meaning Jerry, along with tens of thousands of Americans, have had their social security number exposed for anyone to take. We find it highly disturbing that the exact information that an individual would need to steal a person's identity is being provided online by the Social Security Administration. The Social Security Administration has itself said that exposing this information again is against their own policies. Despite harsh criticism from the Inspector General's office, the SSA says it has to make Social Security numbers of the deceased public for creditors so people don't attempt to open an account under a dead person's name. But the irony is, when mistakes are made, the living deal with credit headaches anyways. Jerry had to pay numerous overdraft fees. The $10 check wound up costing me 30 bucks, I think. After several months, Jerry was able to straighten things out with the SSA office. Now he and favorite, that's his dog, have settled down. Although, Jerry may move back to Tulsa from Shakota and continue the cycle. Wherever life takes them, Jerry's enjoying living every second of it. Life's always been good to me. I mean, even whenever I was dead, it was good, I guess. Especially after I found out I was live again. Marla Carter, 2 News Works for you.